Uh, I won't be doing any grinding until next spring. The wooden sluice out here on the top of the water wheel was damaged during all that flooding. So they're going to replace it over the winter time. Then you also had your town meetings in the mill serve small communities. Mills were pretty popular at one time. Jar number one right here is yellow field corn. That's just about what everybody brought in here to have ground in the corn mill. Number two is you ground up corn as it's coming out of grinding stuff. Number three, corn mill. That's what everybody's after. After it's all ground up and bolted out, bolt means we're going to separate all the bad stuff out. Because we're after this one here. Grits. If you've ever eaten grits, that's what fresh ground grits look like. There is prairie gold wheat that's grown out west. Now the miller would order that and have it shipped to the mill so they grind up like flour. That's the prairie gold wheat ground into flour. That's grade A flour for baking breads and cakes and that. Number 10, the dark one, buckwheat. Uh, number 11, which is the third from the right, uh, that's ground up buckwheat coming off the grinding stone. And number 12 there is bolted out buckwheat flour, the real gray looking. And then the very last one over is the outer hulls that comes off of the buckwheat, which is used for stuffing pillows. See the rope hanging down the front? Each one of them doors is, has a purpose. One thing that lets air in there blowing around helps circulate the dust out so it doesn't build up in the mill. Uh, and it's also used to take the grain up there. Now that rope will come down through this little trap door right here in the roof of this porch. The rope attaches to that piece right here in the middle. That's just long enough before it goes through that door. Now this is called a saddle. You have two leather straps, one on each one of these loops right here. That fits around that grain bag. So now you're gonna hoist that up the front of the building. It's gonna take it right on up to the third floor. Now you're gonna store the grain up on the third floor. It wasn't corn that you brought in, it was what the miller bought. Because he was buying grain from everybody around the mill. So what he did, his personal corn or personal wheat, whatever he bought, he would hoist it up to that third floor and store it up there. Now, when it's ready to be used, you bring it back out that third door on the third floor up there, bring it down to the second floor, then you take it in that way. Uh, as purpose, that rope up there. And it also had a hoist system on that third floor that ran off the water wheel. So it wasn't no physical labor and you'd have to hoist it up by hand that rope wrapped around a pulley, and when you tightened up that rope, see that pulley would just pull right on up there. You just take that grain up there, store it, and he's ready to grind. And the only time you ground your own grain is when you didn't have anybody coming in. That way you had time to grind up the corn. Otherwise, if you bring in 50 pounds and another guy over here, he brings in 100 pounds, this guy back here 75 pounds, first come, first serve. I'll do you first, then the next person in line, the next person after that and I would keep a portion of it for payment. It's called toll, like what you spend on turnpike. Uh, on average, I'm gonna keep about 10% of what you bring in here after it's all ground up for payment. You see, that's what I would either sell back to customers coming in for cash or they would barter on it. Whatever you brought in, if I could feed my family or sell it out of the store, I'm gonna trade you for it. You notice how it has a square hole in the center? That's a bed stone. That's the one that's mounted down in the grinding floor that stays stationary. The reason why it has a square hole in the center, you have a shaft that comes up through that stone that turns the top stone, which is called the runner stone. Okay. Runner stone has a round hole in it. The grain falls down through the runner stone, hits the bed stone, and starts piling up. And then the stone itself will actually grab that grain and pull it in as it starts piling in there, because gravity's gonna push on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But that's how you can tell the difference. Ones with square holes is your bed stone, and ones with the round holes are runner stones. Um, the reason why that one's buried in the ground, bottom half of it's broke off. <laughs> they found it, wanted to use it for decoration. Works out pretty good. That's, that's a wheat stone there. That's pretty good. Fitz water wheel. Made the Marlington Ironworks in 1852. That's the first year that they, they were a subsidiary of uh, Fitz water wheel company in Pennsylvania. They built them down here. Hey, that was big business back then. That was like automobiles back then. <laughs> Everybody that had any manufacturing had a water wheel and the best wheels you could go with, iron. No work, no maintenance, they're balanced, smooth running, more efficient. You get the wood, oh, you're fighting a losing battle there. But if you didn't have a lot of money, you went with the wood. Yeah. Just in West Virginia alone, there was over 500 grist mills at one time.